you're conducting a study. Mm -hmm. um, can you tell us a little bit about the study? Sure, so this is um, a clinical trial that we have called uh, Preparatory 5, and what it is is an open-label clinical trial. Uh, meaning that uh, it's uh, everyone who would be in the trial would be taking the medication without blinding, like it's not a placebo control trial, it's very clear that everyone's getting the actual drug. We're, we're also labeling it what's what's called a demonstration project, and that's a term that we use to, to refer to the fact that it's it's uh, usage of the drug to kind of demonstrate what uh, kind of outcomes you could expect, how uh, delivery of the medication goes in, in something closer to real life conditions. Um, in contrast to you know, a randomized placebo-controlled trial where we're really looking to see whether something works at all. In this mm -hmm. case, we have evidence that PrEP already does work. Um, and so what we're trying to do is build on that by seeing what happens in real life. Um, so this is a trial in which we're going to be administering the medication to uh, 50 um, men who have sex with men, gay, bisexual, or other men who have sex with men who live in the Toronto area, um, who um, are at high risk of HIV, to follow them for a year and measure things like um, how well they're able to, to adhere with the medications, how well we do in terms of preventing HIV, how well uh, we do in terms of um, avoiding other safety problems, uh, and also measuring other things like the contribution of community-based organizations to the rollout of pre-exposure prophylaxis. There seems to be some fear that condoms won't be used if people are taking PrEP. Is that something that you're looking at as well? We are indeed going to be looking at issues around uh, condom use and uh, risk-taking uh, activity among participants in the trial. Uh, and uh, one thing that's important to emphasize is that, of course, uh, any delivery of PrEP really needs to be done in the context of a whole package of prevention intervention. So that includes not only PrEP, but also a lot of detailed counseling with that individual, a lot of regular testing, uh, definitely recommendation to continue to use condoms as much as possible, and attention to other issues in that person's life that might be predisposing them to, um, to risk-taking behavior. All that being said, certainly there is a realistic concern that makes a lot of sense that, that PrEP might have an impact on condom use, and that's something we have to keep a very close eye on. Um, the potential would, of course, be that if uh, someone feels protected against HIV infection, that there might be what we call in the literature risk compensation, an increase in risk-taking behavior that could predispose not only to HIV, but actually to a whole host of other sexually transmitted infections as well. Some AIDS organizations in the United States have spoken out against PrEP. Is, it, is there a similar dynamic happening here in Canada? I think the organization you're referring to in the United States might be uh, the AIDS Healthcare Foundation, which uh, indeed did have a very vocal and continues to have a, a pretty vocal uh, opposition to the widespread use of PrEP and certainly uh, against its approval by the Food and Drug Administration in the United States. There is not quite the same high level, high profile uh, resistance among any particular organization in Canada to my knowledge, but certainly I think uh, there is a lot of concern among community-based organizations, among community members, uh, also among a lot of clinicians and, and, and public health individuals as well, that PrEP, despite its great potential to, to help us prevent HIV infection, could come at some costs. And it's exactly for that reason that we need to be uh, very vigilant in, in monitoring the use of PrEP and doing so responsibly. And, uh, and actually, indeed, the, that's the motivation for us doing this, uh, this, this pilot trial, to get some information about what really happens when you use this new intervention uh, in real people in, in Toronto. Now, have you found all your volunteers? We are in the process right now of enrolling for the trial. There has been a tremendous amount of interest uh, even before we started the trial because word gets out pretty quick. And uh, so far we're in the process of doing screening visits for, for people who have expressed interest in, uh, in enrolling in the study. So for people who are interested in your study, and there would be quite a few people, what is the timeline, if you could just break it down, when you expect certain things to happen? Well, we opened this study to enrollment. In other words, we uh, started to ask for individuals to be referred to the study uh, just beginning last month, a few weeks ago in October of 2014. And we're right now in the process of doing a whole bunch of screening visits. A screening visit in, in this trial means sitting down with uh, research staff to review what the study is all about, assess someone's eligibility, uh, and then if someone does meet the eligibility criteria, then we would initiate what's called a baseline visit. That would be the first visit at which we actually prescribe PrEP, um, and then we would follow that individual regularly uh, for uh, a total of 12 months.